personally, I think one of the biggest problems American Christians face, and when I say American Christians, I'm talking about true Christians, is the fact that we aren't forced on a daily basis to examine the cost of what it is to be a Christian. Here in America, it's easy to be a Christian in name only. Let me say that again. Here in America, it's easy to be a Christian in name only, name and profession only. And to some degree, it's still somewhat easy to be a biblical Christian here in the United States. But because the persecution in this country is not at the point where we are losing our lives or our freedom for our faith, I think that causes us to take our faith for granted at times. And that makes us weak. That's what it does. Now, I titled the video, Don't Be a Cowardly Calvinist, because yesterday I was talking to a subscriber who was currently dealing with the results of how his faith is affecting his job. Why is our faith, our religion, our Christianity, our relationship to our Lord, why is that important? Why is it so important that it's worth losing everything for? And the answer is because he died. Now, I think about that often. He died for me. He chose me and he's currently sanctifying me. What more does he have to do to earn our allegiance? What else does he have to do? He died. If there is no work of separation in your life recognizable at any point in time, you're lost. You say, oh, Brother Paul, if I say that, they'll kill me. Then die! I'll lose my... Then lose your home! It'll cost me! Then make the payment! Don't tell me about that. How many Calvinists do we have? How many men who have good theology, but they are too cowardly to preach it? Because it'll get me in trouble. What do you expect it to do? All the ones who have gone before us, their blood, they shed. You're preaching to a largely unregenerate church body. What do you expect them to do to you? But how is it going to change? Except we suffer. Well, you, you know, I was preaching at no small school several years ago and a genuine revival broke out, so they tell me. I am never allowed to be back in that school again. And someone asked me about it. They said, I don't understand. And I said, this is what you've got to understand. Men are too civilized to want revival. They're too proper to want revival. They want everything pretty and clean and they'll never get revival. Because when revival comes, it's going to rip everything apart, including us. Worst thing that ever happened to a preacher is he becomes civilized. It's worthless. Worthless. One thing I noticed about Leonard Ravenhill, and I'd take a Leonard Ravenhill over 20 dead Calvinists. One thing I noticed about Leonard Ravenhill, he was dangerous. He was dangerous. We are to be men of love, men with towels, men who weep, men who serve. But we are to be dangerous about truth. Do you really expect to get out of this unscathed? Without any scars? Do you expect? Just read Howell Harris, Daniel Rollins, Whitfield, the two Wesley boys, even Edwards himself. Look what it costs. And it's the same thing in their day that it is in ours. Do you see that? What was going on? I'll tell you what was going on. If you've been baptized as an infant, you're in the church. Even though you're unregenerate, you're in the church. You're in the church. You got in. Why? Because you went through some man-made superstitious thing. Southern Baptists are no different. It's just we don't have infant baptism. We have that silly superstitious prayer at the end of a Roman road that sends more people to hell than every brothel in this country. It's true. 